You know, Brian, we like talking about nutrients and fertilizer, but we yep. really don't talk about magnesium very much on the show. Well, it is one of the secondary nutrients. Yep, and the reason why we don't spend a lot of time talking about it is because in the type of clay that we have in a lot of the Midwest, it's called Montmorillonite clay, and one of the components of that clay is magnesium. So basically, we get all our fertility on the magnesium side for free. In fact, in many of our soils, having too much magnesium is really a problem for us. Yeah, we do have too much magnesium in some of our soils. The issue becomes magnesium is a very small molecule. Calcium, on the other hand, is a very large molecule. And so the way I always will explain this to people is, Think about if you were in a big room, and let's say you filled that room with basketballs. Are you still going to be able to breathe? Well, sure you are, because there's plenty of pore space going through those basketballs. But if you filled a room floor to ceiling with sand and you're in there, are you going to be able to breathe anymore? Nope, you're not. You're dead. And the same thing happens with your plant roots. When you have too much magnesium, you don't have enough pore space, you don't get oxygen through that soil. So anytime we look at soil tests and we see excess magnesium, that's usually a good indicator of poorly drained soils, not much air in the soil, poor root growth, and we're also going to have some problems with other nutrients being available, like potassium, for example. If you have too much magnesium, you oftentimes don't get the potassium you want into your plants. Well, it's all a balancing act out in the soil. Just like right now, Brian, we're trying to balance my volume level with all the cicadas in the trees that are making all kinds of noise. It's tough to compete with. But when we're thinking about out in the field, when you do have too much magnesium, you end up typically with a tight and sticky soil that's kind of difficult to get in. And I know in our area, a lot of guys will say, well, in that heavy ground, I absolutely have to do fall tillage. Otherwise, it's just so tough to get into that ground in the spring. Now, certainly putting in some drainage tile will help in those situations, but you know that is just a tough thing, Brian, when you have so much magnesium. How do you get rid of it? Because you can't do it over a short period of time. No, you can't, but you absolutely can lower the magnesium you have in your soil. What a lot of farmers will do is they will use gypsum. That's just calcium sulfate. And when you put the calcium sulfate into the soil with the excess magnesium, you're going to end up with Epsom salts, basically magnesium sulfate is Epsom salts, and Epsom salts are leachable. So if you have good drainage, if you tile in that land, and you may have to tile close together, 15, 20 foot spacings possibly in very heavy magnesium land, over a long period of time, you can flush a bunch of that magnesium out by using gypsum. Well, that is one of the things. When you have tight, sticky soils like that, and as you were mentioning with magnesium, it's such a small molecule, there just isn't much pore space there, you aren't going to get that infiltration as well as you would in some other soils. So you aren't going to get things percolating and moving through that soil quite as fast, so you are going to have to place tile lines closer together. And when you talk about putting out gypsum, we're not talking about a small amount of gypsum here because think about your soil. When we're talking about a six inch soil sample, we're talking two million pounds per acre of soil. So if you're going to try and change two million pounds that have way too much magnesium, you aren't going to do that with just 100 pounds of gypsum. And you're not going to do that overnight like we said already. So we talk about too much magnesium. How much is too much? Well, the thing is, we don't want you to just look at your soil test at parts per million. What we want you to do is look at base saturation. What base saturation is, it's a ratio of five different nutrients, one to the other four. So with magnesium, what we're looking at here is we would like that to be 12 to 25 percent. If you're below 12 percent, you need to be adding magnesium most likely to your soil to maximize yield depending on the crop you're raising. And if you have above 25% magnesium, that tells us we've got a tight, poorly drained soil. You have too much magnesium out there. Now, one of the nutrients that goes in ratio with this magnesium, one of the nutrients that's also in this base saturation is calcium. So that's why a lot of people will talk about a calcium to magnesium ratio. I'm not so concerned about that. I'm just concerned about magnesium to all the other nutrients in the base saturation. But basically, if you put more calcium out in your soil, then percentage-wise, the amount of magnesium that's out there is going to go down. So that's the other thing you gain when you go to gypsum, which again is calcium sulfate. Well, and as you mentioned before, when you have magnesium soils and you put calcium sulfate on, that magnesium is going to displace the calcium and flush out of the soil, leaving you free calcium. So in effect, you're putting more calcium on and getting rid of some of that magnesium so you can get that ratio more in line. In base saturation, those five nutrients are going to add up to 100%. Calcium, we'd like to see at least 65% out of the 100. 
So if you've got way too much magnesium, I know for sure you have to have too little calcium out there because there's only so much in 100. So if you've got way more like 40% magnesium like we have on some of those heavy, heavy clays, all of a sudden you can't have any more than 60% calcium. So I know putting more calcium on is gonna be a positive. Yep, so once again, what we suggest you do with this magnesium thing is take a look at a base saturation test for your soil. If you're below 12% base saturation of magnesium, add some. If you're above 25%, you may consider doing some other things, whether it's putting gypsum out there or getting any calcium source out there. Also, improving your drainage, that's going to help over time to reduce the effects of that excess magnesium. Improving the drainage can, over time, help you flush some of that excess magnesium out, especially when you get more sulfur in the soil. Again, magnesium and sulfur together will form Epsom salts, which are leachable and can move through your soil. Well, getting your nutrients in balance can also help you have a healthier crop, which in turn will help fight weeds like our Weed of the Week. Have you identified this week's weed? 